The concrete jungle. In theory, the concrete in these buildings should last for hundreds of years. But a recent survey of buildings in Sydney showed that 69% of the buildings surveyed had concrete durability problems. The annual repair bill in Australia is estimated to be $50 million and is expected to soar to an incredible $200 million by the 1990s. I'm Gregory Sporton, and in this edition of Building Tomorrow, we're going to discuss concrete and why the concrete in some of our buildings is literally falling apart. The Romans were first to use a crude type of concrete. It consisted of broken brick embedded in a lime mortar. With the fall of the Roman Empire, the technology was lost. Nearly 2,000 years passed before it was rediscovered by Smeaton in the late 18th century. The most important advance, however, occurred in 1824 when Aspden produced a cement which imitated Portland stone, a stone frequently used in English houses at the time. He called his product Portland Cement, and this name has been adopted to describe all cements made by burning together finely crushed limestone and clay. Concrete is inherently strong in compression and weak in tension. In 1867, Joseph Monnier discovered that by adding steel reinforcing to concrete, a product strong in both compression and tension could be made. With the use of reinforced concrete, structures could now be made bigger and stronger than ever before. A good example of the early use of reinforced concrete is the Anderson Street Bridge over the River Yarra in Melbourne. The bridge was built in 1899 by engineer John Monash. Monash is said to have remarked, I have made provision for expansion joints, not because it was the orthodox thing to do, but because in my opinion it was vital. If there were no expansion joints, something would have to give, and the nervous public could regard cracks due to thermal conditions as evidence of structural failure. The Melbourne Public Library was the first significant Australian building using reinforced concrete. Completed in 1911, the dome has a span of 35 metres, and at the time was the largest structure of its kind in the world. But the big change in our cities occurred after 1957, when the maximum building height of 46 metres was waived. With the ready availability of pre-mixed and pre-cast concrete, improved design and construction techniques, our cities changed. But problems have arisen which cast doubts on the durability of concrete. The main problem is that the steel reinforcing near the surface of the concrete is corroding. As the steel rusts, it expands. This expansion forces the concrete outwards, resulting in cracking, staining and spalling of the concrete. The quality of concrete used on a building site is gauged by measuring the compressive strength of a small sample. For years, it has been assumed that the stronger the concrete, the more durable it will be. But changes in manufacture and application have led our scientists to question the relationship between strength and durability. Don Beresford is a leading world authority on concrete technology. One of the fields of research he's involved in at the division is in the durability of concrete. What are the prime causes of concrete reinforcement corrosion? Well, probably the prime cause is the effect of carbonation. With carbonation, air enters the concrete and the carbon dioxide in the air has the effect of destroying the protective alkalinity around the reinforcement and so the corrosion process is free to proceed. We've got some carbonation samples here. Um, how do you get them and, and what do you do with them? Well, these are samples of concrete which have been specially made in the laboratory. They've then been subjected to an atmosphere of quite concentrated carbon dioxide. Now when we break them and spray them with a chemical indicator, we can clearly see the level at which the carbonation has proceeded within the concrete as detected by this 
pronounced change in colour. The pink yeah. colour is where the concrete is not carbonated and where it is carbonated around the surface the colour is that of normal concrete. Right. Um, does it vary depending on the concrete type that's used in making? Well gen generally the stronger or the higher quality a concrete is the lower the rate of carbonation. For example in a strong concrete you might only get something like five millimetres from the edge over ten years but with a rather weaker concrete say something like 20 megapascals over 10 years we might expect that carbonation layer to have proceeded something like 15 to 20 millimetres into the concrete over that period. What can be done to repair buildings that are subject to reinforcement corrosion? Yes well this is quite a problem uh, when a building is suffering spalling, rusting of reinforcement all that can be done at the present time is to remove all the old concrete to clean out the area thoroughly and then to replace the affected concrete with a, a suitable patch of either new concrete or some other material such as epoxy resin which will prevent the corrosive agents penetrating to the reinforcement and continuing the process. How will reinforcement corrosion affect the application of concrete? Well, I don't think it will affect it very much as we gain more knowledge on the various factors that affect the, the, the corrosion of reinforcement in concrete, it'll be a case of specifying the correct concrete for the correct situation. At the present time there is much concrete being used which is not the right concrete for the environment and with the passage of time and the greater knowledge that we gain by virtue of research we'll find that it will be possible to specify a concrete in a particular situation in a building which we can confidently expect will see out the life of that building without reinforcement corrosion problems. This is Dr Paul Walsh. Dr Walsh is well known for his research in the design of residential concrete floor slabs and was involved in the writing of Amendment 9 of the Victorian Building Regulations. He also currently represents the division, working on a standards association committee who are responsible for the new concrete code. We've heard a lot about carbonation, Paul, but what are the other causes of durability problems? Well, the main other causes are associated with chlorides. Chlorides can get into concrete through exposure to salt water spray, or they can be built into the concrete as an additive during the manufacture. What's the division doing to make sure new buildings are going to be more durable? Well, we try to communicate our research results through seminars, conferences and technical publications, but as well as that, we're trying to change the way in which buildings are actually designed by changing the code of practices. So there'll be changes in the building codes? That's right. And these changes will reflect the causes of failure, such as that near the coast there'll be much stronger concrete and much more dense concrete required in the buildings, whereas, say, in Alice Springs, more moderate requirements will apply. There will also be restrictions in the way concrete is manufactured, the additives that may be used, the way fly ash is used and so forth. And what's going to be the overall effect of these changes? The overall effect will be people will be using in the future a much denser concrete, corresponding much stronger concrete than they're accustomed to. So in the past 20 megapascal concrete would have been the normal thing for buildings, now it'll be around 35 to 40. Research in collaboration with the Cement and Concrete Association has highlighted two factors which account for reinforcement corrosion in our more recent concrete buildings. Since the 1960s, the dramatic increase in the use of concrete for external building components has led to an increase in the area of concrete exposed to the weather. Secondly, the use of cement saving techniques, whilst retaining the strength of modern concretes, has increased their permeability. Both of these factors help to explain the occurrence of reinforcement corrosion in modern buildings. But there are many questions still unanswered. For instance, the reliability of repair techniques. Only further research and its application will ensure that the concrete used in future buildings will, like the concretes of old, last for hundreds of years.